The production rules describe a context-free grammar for addition and subtraction following the standard rules of arithmetic. Can we also include multiplication? It's tempting to reason by analogy and include the rule S produces S times T. But since this is a production rule from the start symbol, it could allow multiplication to be the last operation performed. Remember, the first shall be last. In our derivative tree, the first production rule applied turns out to be the last thing that's evaluated. And so we could have a production like, and this would evaluate a plus a times a as 2a squared, which is incorrect. So to avoid this, s can't produce a product. So instead, we need t to produce that product, t times f, where f can only produce a terminal symbol. But what if s is actually a product? Since only t can produce a product, we'll also need the rule s produces t. And similarly, we can include division by the production t produces t divided by f, and so this gives us our set of rules. And let's verify that our production rules actually produce the correct derivation of an arithmetic expression like this. So again, we'll keep track of our production rules, but we'll also simultaneously produce the derivative tree. So the only possible first step is to split off the minus t, so s produces s minus t. Our first term, s, produces s plus t, and this s is going to go to a terminal symbol. This t will produce t divided by f, and this leading t is going to produce t times f, and t and f can only produce terminal symbols, so we'll drop all those down to the bottom. Now if we substitute our terminals and evaluate from the bottom, we would evaluate a times a to get a squared, then a squared divided by a to get a, then a plus a to get 2a, and then 2a minus a to get a. And this corresponds to the correct evaluation. What if we try to include parentheses as well? The possibly ambiguous rule is s produces parenthesis x. In fact, we'll need it if we have an expression like parenthesis a plus a. But note that we'll also need it for expressions like a times a, and a minus a, and a divided by a. Consequently, we'll also need t produces parenthesis s. Now, previously, f could only produce a terminal symbol, but with parentheses, we need to consider possibilities like a times parenthesis a plus a. Our production rules as they stand would give us s produces t, t produces t times f, and then a times f, at which point the only available production rule is f produces a, which won't work which means we also need a way to convert f into a parenthesis, so f produces parenthesis s. So our expanded set of production rules is, and let's show that these rules actually produce a correct derivation of something like this. So using a leftmost derivation, our production rules will be s produces t. That leftmost t becomes t produces f, that leftmost t becomes t times f, and that t is now a terminal. This f becomes parenthesis s, which becomes s minus t, and both of these s and t become terminals. The remaining f becomes parenthesis s, which becomes s plus t, which becomes the terminals a and a. And again, if we have our derivative tree, we could work our way backwards. So evaluating from the bottom up, first we find a minus a, that gives us 0. a plus a gives us 2a. a times 0 gives us 0. 
and then 0 divided by 2a gives us 0, which corresponds to the correct evaluation.